We are finally finished with the linear unit and we're moving on to the unit on exponentials. And so first off, let's review the fundamentals, the basics of exponents. a to the b power is called a power of a. a is the base and b is the exponent. Now there are three ways to look at uh, exponents and how to write them. First off, we have something called exponential form, which is when you actually write the exponent as a superscript. And so this is a, a compact way of writing this next thing, which is the expanded form. So the expanded form of 12 to the fourth is when you actually write it out by the definition of exponents as 12 times 12 times 12 times 12. So if I ask you to expand, I mean write it out the long way. And then if I ask you to simplify a numeric exponent, that means I want you to find what's called the standard form, which is just the way you write the number that these two quantities evaluate to. Now let's look at the additional criteria you need to have simplified exponential expressions. So those uh, criteria I have on the wall. Um, so first one is you can only have positive exponents. No negative exponents, no exponents of zero. So something like four to the zero power is a big frowny face and something like four to the negative one power is also a big frowny face. You don't want negative or zero exponents. This next one can be confusing if you don't know what a term is. So a base can appear only once in a term. So I don't want to see 2 times x squared x cubed because this is a single term and the base of x appears twice. Now don't get this confused with this. This is perfectly acceptable because I have two separate terms. So the base of 2 and the base of x appear once in this term, and the base of x appears once in this term. Okay, It's basically, with its addition, you can't really do much to it. But if it's multiplication, you can totally combine those into a single base. So just like 1x. Okay, Now, you evaluate numeric bases if possible. So for example, if I say 2 cubed x, that is a big frowny face because I know what 2 cubed is. Okay, that's 8. This would be happy face, right? And sometimes it's not possible. So for example, if I have 4 to the x power, I don't know what x is. I can't evaluate that, uh, even though it does have a numeric base, right? As always, no parentheses. However, with exponentials, this idea of getting rid of the parentheses can become very complicated very quickly. And last but not least, no decimals. Okay, Avoid decimals if you can. Try to do all your numeric work in fractions. Since we're dealing with exponents again, we have to remember this most missed concept in algebra, I believe on like the first or second day that I taught you stuff. We talked about how um, these two expressions are different. And in this case, what you expand is just the two. So you have one negative sign and four twos. And in this case, you expand negative two so you have negative 2 multiplied together four times. And so we didn't have to deal with this in linear, so you probably forgot all about it. But now that we're back in exponentials, you have to be super conscientious about what gets raised to what power. Remember, the number and the sign of the number are two separate things. And if you want them both raised to the power, they have to be in parentheses. Next, let's review the definition of a zero exponent. The criteria states that if a is not, not equal to zero, then I get the definition a to the zero power equals one. And in algebra one, we assume that the variables are, that I give you that might be a base are not equal to zero. Um, in algebra two and beyond, you have to state this if it's not already stated, because this definition requires a base that's not zero. 
So for example, um, basic, if I have 17 raised to the 0 power, that's just going to be a 1. Now, don't forget the most missed concept, because if I see this, that's not 1, that's negative 1, because the 0 power only applies to the 17th, uh, to the 17, and I want the opposite of 17 to the 0, which is negative 1. And then if I put that negative 17 in parentheses and raise it to the 0 power, then that again is 1. Now we're not going to only deal with these super basic level ones. I'm going to fancy them up a bit by putting variables in there. So then if I ask you what that is, you apply the exponent to the only thing it applies to, and that's the f. So you get 3 times 1, which is 3, assuming, of course, that f is not equal to 0. And if I group it together, remember, in parentheses, that means this entire quantity goes to 0, uh, this, uh, to the 0 power. So then I just get 1, of course, assuming that f is not equal to 0.